Travel alert, using the hallway, you travel south, taking five minutes to arrive, reaching the far southern end of the long hallway here, you encounter a door that glows with a soft orange light. Suspecting it to be magical in some way, the door is wizard locked, so picking it won't do any good. To open the door, you will need some sort of magic as well, such as a knock spell. Standing there, let's do a party curiosity check to see if anyone notices anything else about the door. Needing a 11 or less from your heroes, a 2 was rolled. Success. Further examining the door, Redfern notices a tiny metallic flap about eye level in the door. Sliding the flap to one side, there is a tiny hole there you can use to apparently peer into the room beyond. Pointing to the tiny hole, Eswin steps to it and looks. I see, several tall creatures inside, with large horns extruding from their heads. The brave warrior sneers, then turns back to your party, his news troubling. They look like that spine devil we fought back at the Baron's mansion, but I see several of them. Both Redfern and Kartha look, quickly confirming Eswin's observation. What are Infernals doing here within the depths of the Chagaria power tower, Redfern asks aloud. Infernals you say? Darius answers, surprised. There were, whispers, of the Ultimates attempting to summon demons and devils in the past. I never once believed them to be true. It's probably best we just leave them be, Sainayir suggests, recalling all too well how difficult it was to slay just one of these monsters. The door is likely wizard locked for a reason. The door here remains wizard locked. Without some sort of specific magic like a knock spell, you can't get past the door. Janet uses a Jep Power Tower dungeon key on the locked door, unlocking the wizard locked door and allowing access to the area beyond. Carefully opening the door and stepping into the natural cavern beyond, the four spined devils turn in your direction, grin with the prospect of overwhelming you and immediately attack, not interested in anything you have to say. Your party is under attack. Facing the entire party are four spined devils. It's Barthal's turn. What do you want him to do? It's Barthal's turn. What do you want him to do? Needing a 45 or less on percentile dice, 86 is rolled. Failure. Barthal tries to blend into the shadows but is unsuccessful, remaining visible to all combatants. Spine Devil number 1 attacks Eswin with it, it's Kartha's turn. What do you want her to do? Kartha casts Spiritual Hammer on Spine Devil number 4, bashing it for 5 points of damage for 5 minutes. Spine Devil number 4 attacks Eswin with its bite needing a 21 to hit. Die roll is a 19, plus 8 to hit, Spine Devil number 4 hits Eswin, nearly incapacitating him, needing a 6 or greater, it's Darius' turn. What do you want him to do? Darius casts Lightning Bolt on roughly half of all encountered combatants, electrocuting them Spine Devil number 1 is electrocuted for 12 points of damage, needing a 14 or greater, Spine Devil number 1 rolls a 19 and saves for half damage versus spells. Redfern casts Magic Missile on Spine Devil number 3, striking it with a magic missile for 10 points of damage. Spine Devil number 3 has been defeated. It's Muriel Ev's turn. What do you... Marialeth casts Phantasmal Force on Spine Devil number 4, 
horrifying it for one point of damage for 5 minute. Eswin uses a boots of speed on himself, allowing himself to act twice each round for 5 minutes. Spine Devil number 2 attacks Sainayers with its bite needing a 19 to hit. Die roll is a 6, it's Sainayers' turn. What do you want him to do? GM note, a new combat round has begun. Initiative is rolled, with higher v- Eswin readies his longsword plus 2 and swings at Spine Devil number 4, needing a 9, needing a 45 or less on percentile dice, a 90 is rolled. Needing a 40 or less on percentile dice, a 57 is rolled. Failure. Kartha readies her mace plus one and swings at spine devil number one. Kartha directs her spiritual hammer at spine devil number one. Ba Janet uses a blink dog on spine devil number one, biting it for six points of damage for a half hour. It's C. Nyers's turn. St. Aeus readies his mace plus one and swings at spine devil number two, needing a 19 to hit. Eswin readies his longsword plus two and swings at spine devil number one, needing a 19 to hit. Die roll is a four, plus eight to hit. Redfern readies his quarter staff plus one and swings at spine devil number one, needing a 19 to hit. Die roll, Darius readies his dagger plus two and swings at spine devil number one, needing a 19 to hit. Marioleth directs her phantasmal force at spine devil number one, horrifying it for 3 points of damage and leaving it with 5 hit points. Spine Devil number 1 attacks Eswin with its bite needing Spine Devil number 2 attacks Sainayers with its bite needing a 19 to hit. Die roll is a sick GM note. A new combat round has begun. Initiative is roll. Redfern binds the wounds of Eswin, returning his hit points to 0 and stopping his bleeding. Spine Devil number 2 attacks Sainayers with its bite needing a It's Janet's turn. What do you want her to do? Janet casts Cure Moderate Wounds on Eswin, healing him for 13 hit points. It's Barthal's turn. What do you want him to do? Barthal readies his short sword plus one and swings at Spine Devil number one, needing a 19. Kartha directs her spiritual hammer at Spine Devil number two, bashing it for. Marioleth directs her phantasmal force at Spine Devil number two, horrifying it for one point of damage and leaving it with 18 hit points. It's Marioleth's turn. What do you, needing a 40 or less on percentile dice, a 10 is rolled. Janet directs her blink dog at spine devil number 2, biting it for 4 points of damage and leap. Darius readies his dagger plus 2 and swings at spine devil number 2, needing an GM note, a new combat round has begun. Initiative is rolled. Eswin readies his longsword plus 2 and swings at spine devil number 2, needing a 19 to hit. Die roll is a 19. Marioleth readies her longsword plus one and swings at spine devil number two, needing a 15 to hit, plus four due to hiding in shadows. Die roll is a 17, plus four to hit and does triple damage, Marioleth hits spine devil number two, doing 24 points of damage and defeating it. Well done. All combatants have been defeated, ending the battle. Each hero receives 472 experience points. The last of the spine devils are defeated and they retreat into the far southeastern corner, humbled and now quite intimidated by your party. What are you infernals doing here in Sisalus? Darius demands to know, still surprised by their presence. How do you not know this, your kind, who summoned us here, one of the monsters whispers on the verge of death. The ultimates summoned you here? Redfern responds, growing angry. The ultimates brought you here to their underground dungeon? The devil's not in agreement, very much wanting to kill all of you but too injured and afraid now to do anything. There is a passage, to the west, another of the infernals offers, eyeing you suspiciously. That leads down to a lower level, where we were first summoned. The ultimates have since sealed the level, if you go there, more of us will slay you. Both a threat as well as warning, it sounds like more infernals await your party if you decide to descend into this lower level. Consider us warned. Eswin responds, turning to leave. Let's go. GM note, your quest log has been updated. Click the quests button for all the details, while the door here is no longer wizard locked, the spine devils inside are far too wounded to escape anytime soon, so they're not a threat. You can return north if you wish, 
or you can head west down another dark and foreboding corridor here. Janet casts Cure Light Wounds on Eswin, healing him for 11 hit points. Kartha casts Cure Light Wounds on St. Aeers, healing him for 8 hit points. St. Aeers casts Cure Light Wounds on himself, healing him for 9 hit points. Travel Alert, using the hallway. You travel northwest, taking a few minutes to arrive, continuing west and reaching this slightly glowing door in the northern wall, you find that it is wizard locked as well, without some sort of counter magic, such as a knock spell, you won't be able to open it. Putting your ear up to the door and listening intently, you can hear movement from within, the chamber beyond is certainly occupied. You believe you hear a bird's cry, like an eagle or hawk as well, but that's about all you can tell. This door is similar to the one where we fought the Spine Devils, Eswin recognizes, warning the party. Perhaps more Infernals wait within. Which only means we will be attacked again if we try to get in, Kartha conjectures. Maybe we should move on. Everyone turns to you, waiting for your orders. The door here remains wizard locked. Without some sort of specific magic like a knock spell, you can't get past. Janet uses a Jep Power Tower Dungeon key on the locked door, unlocking the wizard locked door and allowing access to the area beyond. Unlocking the magical door, your heroes carefully open it and step into the cavern. Inside are half a dozen tall, vaguely humanoid creatures with a vulture's head and bat-like wings armed and dressed for combat. The creatures look you over, deciding whether to attack or not. As they leer ahead, let's do a party intelligence check to see what you know about them. Needing a 14 or less from your heroes, a 11 was rolled. Success, more infernals I believe, Kartha whispers into your ear. I don't know much about these, but they look well suited for combat. Surveying your party as possibly their next meal, the monsters take to the air, about to attack. Undaunted, Eswin steps forward, shouting to the monsters with defiance. We've already defeated the spine devils to the east. Smell their blood and fear on all of us, and attack at your peril. The monsters can smell something that unnerves them. Let's do a charisma check on Eswin and go from there. Needing a 12 or less from Eswin, a 13 was rolled. Failure, apparently not impressed with Eswin's intimidation, the winged humanoid monstrosities fly at the entire party, initiating vicious combat. Your party is under attack. Menacing your entire party are five rocks. It's Muriel Ev's turn. What do you want her to do? Marialeth casts web on roughly half of all encountered combatants, Attempting to immobilize them in sticky goo Brock number one avoids the attack altogether, Brock number two avoids the attack altogether, Brock Janet uses a blink dog on Brock number two, biting it for five points of damage for a half hour. Brock number one attacks Eswin with its bite needing a 21 to hit. Die roll is a 20 which is an automatic hit, Brock number one hits Eswin, biting him for two points of damage and leaving it's Bart Hall's turn. What do you want him to do? Needing a 45 or less on percentile dice, a 21 is rolled. Success. Barthol blends into the shadows, St. Aeus readies his mace plus one and swings at Brock number two. Eswin uses a boots of speed on himself, 
allowing himself to act twice each round for five minutes. It's Kartha's turn. What do you want her to do? Kartha readies her mace plus one and swings at Brock number two, needing a 17 to hit. Darius casts Phantasmal Force on Brock number two, nearly horrifying it. Redfern casts Phantasmal Force on Brock number two, horrifying it for one point of damage for five minutes, needing a 14 or greater. Brock number two rolls a two and fail. Brock number five attacks Sanadiers with its bite, needing a 19 to hit. Die roll is a 11 plus 8 to hit, Brock number 5 hits Sanadier, GM note, a new combat round has begun. Initiative is rolled, with higher values acting first, Eswin readies his longsword plus 2 and swings at Brock number 2, needing a 17 to hit. Die roll is a 8, plus 8 to hit, Eswin misses Brock number 2. It's Barthal's turn. What do you- Barthal readies his short sword plus 1 and swings at Brock number 2, needing a 13 to hit, plus 4 due to hiding it. Redfern directs his phantasmal force at Brock number 2, horrifying it for 4 points of damage and defeating it. Brock number 1 attacks, it's Redfern's turn. What do you want him to do? Redfern binds the wounds of Sanadiers, returning his hit points to 0 and stopping his bleeding. It's Kartha's turn. What do you want her to do? Kartha casts Spiritual Hammer on Brock number 5, bashing it for- Needing a 40 or less on percentile dice, a 28 is rolled. Success. Mariala, Eswin readies his longsword plus 2 and swings at Brock number 1, needing a 17 to hit. Die roll is a 9, plus 8 to hit, Eswin hits Brock number 1 doing 9 points of damage and leaving it with 39 hit points. Darius casts Magic Missile on Brock number 1, striking it with a Magic Missile for 9 points of damage. Janet directs her Blink Dog at Brock number 1, biting it Janet casts Cause Light Wounds on Brock number 1, wounding it for 8 points of damage, needing a 14 or greater, Brock number 1 rolls a 13 and fails versus spells. GM note, a new combat round has begun. Initiative is rolled, with higher values acting first, it's Eswin's turn. Eswin uses a glowing skull throughout the entire local area, illuminating everything well. It's part Barthol uses a potion of moderate healing on Eswin, healing him for 14 hit points. It's Jan. Janet uses a potion of moderate healing on Sanadiers, healing him for 20 hit points. It's Redfern's turn. What do you want him to do? Redfern readies his quarter staff plus one and swings at Brock number one, needing a 17 to hit. Dire Marialeth readies her longsword plus one and swings at Brock number one, needing a 13 to hit, plus four due to hiding in sh Darius readies his dagger plus two and swings at Brock number one. Redfern directs his phantasmal force at Brock number 1, horrifying it for 2. Kartha directs her spiritual hammer at Brock number 1, bashing it for 3 points of d Eswin readies his longsword plus 2 and swings at Brock number 1, needing a 17 to hit. Die roll is a 10, plus 8 to hit. It's Janet's blink dog's turn. What do you want it to do? Janet directs her blink dog at Brock number 1, biting it for 5 points of damage and leaving it with 4 hit points. GM note. A new combat round has begun. Initiative is rolled, with higher values acting first, 
Eswin readies his longsword plus 2 and swings at Brock number 5, needing a 17 to hit. Die roll is a 10, plus 8 to hit, Eswin hits Brock number 5, doing 10 points of damage and leaving it. Barthol readies his short sword plus 1 and swings at Brock number 5, needing a 17 to hit. Sainayers readies his mace plus 1 and swings at Brock number 5, needing a 17 to hit. Janet readies her mace plus 2 and swings at Brock number 5, needing a 17 to hit. Eswin readies his longsword plus 2 and swings at Brock number 5, needing a 17 to hit. Marialeth readies her longsword plus 1 and swings at Brock number 5. Darius casts magic missile on Brock number 5, striking it with a magic missile for 7 points of damage. Brock number 5 attacks Eswin with its bite needing a 21 to hit. It's Redfern's turn. What do you want him to do? Redfern casts magic missile on Brock number 5, striking it with a magic missile for 8 points of- Janet directs her blink dog at Brock number 5, biting it for 2 points of damage and defeating it. Well done. All combatants have been defeated, ending the battle. Each hero receives 591 experience points. The last of the Brock Infernals are defeated and they retreat into the far southwestern corner, humbled and now quite intimidated by your party. Did the ultimate summon you here? Redfern demands to know, looking to Darius for a moment. We promised an entire world to attack and plunder, one of the Infernals responds, angry but still very afraid of your party. The black robes offer much, and then lock us away down below. The monster points at Darius, again confirming that it was the ultimates who drew the Infernals here for some reason. There are many more of us, down below, another of the Vrocks ridicules, attempting to frighten you. Our brethren will soon escape, and all of you will die. The Spine Devil said the same thing, Redfern reminds you. It appears we will face more of these Infernals soon. Why the Ultimates summoned them to Merica in the first place is beyond me, Eswin criticizes. Well take them out if we have to. GM Note, it's dark here. Click the Use Item button to select a source of light, while the door here is no longer wizard locked, the Vrocks have been critically wounded and are no longer a threat. You can continue west to yet another magical door or return east. Martha casts Cure Light Wounds on herself, healing her for 9 hit. Travel Alert, using the hallway, you travel west, taking a few minutes to arrive, continuing west, you encounter yet another door in the northern wall that glows with the same soft orange light. Likely wizard locked as well, picking it won't do any good, to open the door, you will need some sort of magic, such as a knock spell. The door here remains wizard locked. Without some sort of specific magic, Janet uses a Jep Power Tower Dungeon Key on the locked door, unlocking the wizard locked door and allowing access to the area beyond. Your heroes then carefully step into the natural cavern beyond. Inside are yet more infernals, these appearing similar to the spine devils you faced back in area number 6 but with large bat wings and holding two tined forks that look quite offensive. The monsters smile in evil anticipation of destroying your party and freeing themselves, attacking immediately. Your party is under attack. Facing the entire party are six horned devils. It's Eswin's turn. What do you want him to do?
S. Win uses a boots of speed on himself, allowing himself to act twice each round for 5 minutes. Horned Devil number 6 attacks S. Win with its tail needing a 21 to hit. It's Redfern's turn. What do you want him to do? Redfern casts Fireball on roughly half of all encountered combatants, blasting them in an explosion of flame. Horned Devil number 1 is burned for 25 points of damage, needing a 15 or greater. Horned Devil number 1 rolls a 3 and fails versus spells. Horned Devil number 5 attacks Sainadiers with its tail needing a 19 to hit. Die roll is a 4, plus 5 to hit. Horned Devil number 5, it's Muriel Ed's turn. What do you want? Marialeth casts Lightning Bolt on roughly half of all encountered combatants, electrocuting them. Horned Devil number 1 avoids the attack altogether. Horned Devil number 2 avoids the attack all. Janet uses a blink dog on Horned Devil number 1, biting it for 3 points of damage for a half hour. It's Bart Hall's turn. Needing a 45 or less on percentile dice, a 66. St. Aetius casts Spiritual Hammer on Horned Devil number 1, bashing it for 4 points of damage for 5 minutes. Horned Devil number 1 has been defeated. Kartha readies her mace plus 1 and swings at Horned Devil number. Darius casts Fireball on roughly half of all encountered combatants, blasting them in an explosion of flame. Horned Devil. GM note, a new combat round has begun. Initiative is roll. S. Win readies his longsword plus 2 and swings at Horned Devil number 6. Kartha readies her mace plus 1 and swings at Horned Devil number 6, needing a 24. Marialeth casts Magic Missile on Horned Devil number 6, striking it. Janet casts Spiritual Hammer on Horned Devil number 2, bashing it for 1 point of damage for 5. Barth readies his short sword plus 1 and swings at Horned Devil number 2, needing a 24 to hit. Die roll is a 15, plus 5 to hit. Barth misses Horned. S. Win readies his long sword plus 2 and swings at Horned. Darius casts Magic Missile on Horned Devil number 2, striking it with a Magic Missile for 9 points of damage. It's Janet's Blink Dog's turn. Janet directs her Blink Dog at Horned Devil number 2, biting it for 2 points of damage. St. Aetius directs his Spiritual Hammer at Horned Devil number 2, bashing it for 1 point of damage and leaving it with 16 hit points. It's Red Fern's turn. What do you want? Redfern casts Magic Missile on Horned Devil number 2, striking it with a Magic Mi- St. Aetius casts Cause Moderate Wounds on Horned Devil number 2, wounding it for 15 points of damage, needing a 15 or greater. Horned Devil number 2 rolls a 13 and fails versus spells. Horned Devil number 2 has been defeated. Well done. All combatants have been defeated, ending the battle. Each hero receives 338 experience points. The last of the Horned Devils are put down, the monsters fighting so viciously that you have no choice but to destroy every one of them. More of these damned infernals. S. Wing complains, hating them almost as much as undead. What are they doing here? They were apparently summoned here by the same ultimates guarding the one plant below, Darius speculates, disappointed as well. These demons can't be trusted, why would the ultimates even try to ally with them? I am guessing it didn't go well, Kartha suggests, given that they've all been locked up. I suspect we will find out more soon enough. The chamber here empty apart from the Horned Devil corpses, you're free to either try the magical door in the western wall of the corridor beyond or return east. Note that with this room completely secure, you can rest here for as long as you need. Your party rests and recovers for 8 hours. Wounds are tended. Janet casts Cure Light Wounds on Eswin. Janet casts Cure Moderate Wounds on Eswin, healing him for 8 Kartha casts Cure Light Wounds on herself 
healing her for 10 hit points. Kartha casts Cure Light Wounds on Eswin, healing him for 6. St. Aetius casts Cure Light Wounds on himself, healing him for 8, your party rests and recovers for 8 hours. Wounds are tended. Janet casts Cure Light Wounds on Kartha, healing her. Janet casts Cure Moderate Wounds on St. Aetius, healing him for 9 hit points. Your party rests and recovers for 8 hours. Wounds are tended. Spells are memorized and your heroes are refreshed and re-energized. GM note, it's dark here. Click the use item button to select a source of light, travel alert, using the hallway, you travel southwest, taking a minute to arrive, reaching this iron door against the western wall, it is closed and wizard locked. Hopefully you know what to do by now. Worse, heavy iron chains have been fastened to the door as well, not only can you not get in, but anything within is not getting out. Someone has taken great pains to secure this gate, so think twice before attempting to undo it all and proceed forward. Janet uses a glowing skull throughout the entire local area, illuminating. Janet uses a Jep Power Tower Dungeon Key on the locked door, unlocking the wizard locked door and allowing access to the area beyond. Finally busting through the secured door, you enter what was clearly a recent battle, bodies lie all about, blood spatter is everywhere and the stench of decay and death assaults your noses like a slap in the face. The natural cavern appears empty except for all the corpses, although what you think is a stairway down appears in the far corner of the grisly chamber. Searching the corpses will take some time, but it seems that's the best play here. Conducting a thorough search of the battlefield here, you find dozens of infernal corpses, a mixture of horned devils, spined devils, and a few rocks, just as you encountered within the chambers to the east. Most of the monsters here were killed by electricity, as if subjected to a massive lightning bolt. There are, however, dozens of human corpses here as well, all of which are dressed in the familiar black robes of the Ultimates. Hence, it appears that just as many Chagorian sorcerers as Infernals died here, the tremendous battle a stalemate. Let's do a party curiosity check to see if you notice anything more here. Needing a 11 or less from your heroes, a 8 was rolled. Success, there. S. Wind shouts, pointing toward the stairway leading down in the far northwestern corner of the chamber. For just a moment, you spot another infernal turn and dash away down the stairs. It appears that there are more of the monsters here, if you take the stairway down, you will likely encounter more of them. A stairway leading down? Kartha asks, peering ahead. We should investigate. Agreeing with Kartha, Eswin leads the party over to the stairway leading down, picking up an old dagger from one of the corpses along the way. Reaching the top of the stairway, you look down into the darkness, the path ahead foreboding to say the least. Eswin looks to you and then tosses the dagger down the stairs, waiting to see what happens. Moments later, the dagger simply bangs and ricochets off the stone steps, suggesting the way forward isn't trapped. The way looks safe enough, Redfern comments with a nod. But I sense great evil below, let's be careful. In addition to the rust monster blood you need to create a strong acid to neuter the one plant with, you also need that speak with plant scroll so you can utter the safe word to get the monster to reveal its reproductive organs in the first place. Let's check and ensure that you have such a scroll. The chamber surged, the stairway leading down located and the acid and scroll secured, there is little more for your party to do on this level. Hence. Feel free to descend to the second level of the dungeon and continue the destroy the one plant quest.
your party searches for traps but don't find any. Still wearing the black robes of an ultimate, the human corpse here has been deceased several weeks, putrefying in the stale dungeon air. Travel alert, using the stairway, you travel down, taking a minute to arrive, descending the stairway, you're appalled by the amount of carnage lying here, bodies and blood and decomposition almost guaranteed to sicken the hardiest of men. Clearly, some sort of massive battle took place here recently, the number of corpses here significantly more than up in the chamber you just passed through above. Wanting to take a look around, you hear a commotion from the lone hallway leading away to the northeast, a small crowd cheering at times in the distance. Looks like more of the same, S. Wing comments, inspecting several of the bodies. Humans and Infernals, there must have been a fierce battle here. Question is, where did all these Infernals come from? Sainadius wonders, still appalled by them. They can't be from the evil root forest. What do you think, Darius? Kartha asks, standing alongside the ex-ultimate. Darius considers but stays silent. Let's do a wisdom check on your hero and see if you notice anything. Needing a 14 or less from Janet, a 13 was rolled. Success, sometimes, what a person doesn't say can communicate volumes, too. Reading his body language, you suspect Darius knows something but isn't willing to share. However the Infernals arrived, it appears the Ultimates faced them down right here, and fought to a stalemate, Redfern surmises, looking about. The combat here was wicked and intense. A sudden cheer erupts again from down the hallway, the voice is monstrous. While you don't appear in any immediate danger, it's something you will need to investigate. Indeed, let's do a party intelligence check to see if you can discern anything from the cheering beyond. Needing a 14 or less from your heroes, a 18 was rolled. Failure, from the distance, you can't really tell much from the voices, you will have to get closer to learn more. The area investigated, it's time to move forward. Of course, you can return to the first level up the stairway too if you wish. A quick search finds that the human corpses have one wand of lightning bolts. Redfern nods and takes the wand of lightning bolts. Your party searches for traps but don't find any. Travel alert, using the hallway, you travel northeast, taking a few minutes to arrive, quietly approaching a massive chamber beyond, you soon realize that there is some sort of combat going on, a small group of creatures cheering them on. Staying in the shadows, you carefully approach to within 10 feet or so of the hallway's end, peering at the odd sight beyond. The chamber looks to be a small arena, complete with an upper balcony where spectators can watch and cheer on combatants from above. Two infernal creatures are battling one another, a spined devil and a horned devil. The monsters seem quite entertained by the spectacle, so there is little chance they'll notice you. There, fighting one another? Sainadius asks, bewildered. They don't have anything else to do, Redfern proposes. All they know is torture and combat, they've reverted to their base instincts. There are several exits beyond, Eswin whispers, nodding with his head in each direction. But there is no way we can get past these infernals without being seen. What should we do? Kartha asks, looking directly at you, choose an option, charisma, try talking to the infernals, constitution, attack all the infernals. Strength, challenge only the spine devil. You, there. You cry, pointing toward the spine devil in the center of the chamber and causing all the demons to turn in your direction. Let's settle this, just you and I. The spine devil spits some blood, then turns in your direction, sizing you up alongside your party. All the infernals here are surprised to see you, but that surprise turns to bloodlust and they all start slowly stepping in your direction. Janet, let's do a charisma check on your hero and see what happens. 
Needing a 12 or less from Janet, a 6 was rolled. Success, halt. The spine devil commands his fellow infernals, causing them to stop in their approach of your party. I want to hear what this puny humanoid has to say. You and I, one on one, you begin, stepping forward to face the spine devil by yourself. If I defeat you, your brethren stands down and allows us to pass. If you win, we won't destroy all of you. Shall we? The spine devil laughs hideously, then nods affirmatively, inviting you into the center of the chamber. Be careful, Janet, as your fellow party members can't help in this battle. Your party is under attack. About to attack your party is one spine devil. Spine devil attacks Janet with its bite needing a 21 to hit. Die roll is a 15, plus 8 to hit, spine devil hits Janet, incapacitating her, needing a 8 or greater, Janet rolls a 1 and, well, that didn't go well, you've been defeated, the spine devil knocks you down a final time, defeating you. All the infernals raise a huge cheer as Sainaeus and Kartha pull you away, stopping the bleeding and at least keeping you conscious. Janet, what were you thinking? The victorious spine devil whoops it up with his demonic brethren, then turns back toward your party, apparently ready now to assault everyone. Darius tries to convince the monsters to stand down, but they are full of confidence now as well as bloodlust and pay him no heed as they rush your party to attack. Your party is under attack. Threatening all of you are six rocks, four horned devils and two spine devils. It's Muriel Ev's turn. What do you want her to do? Marioleth casts lightning bolt on roughly half of all encountered combatants, electrocuting them Horn Devil number 1 is electrocuted for 24 points of damage. Eswin uses a boots of speed on himself, allowing himself to act twice each round for 5 minutes. It's Darius' turn. Darius casts lightning bolt on roughly half of all encountered combatants, Electrocuting them Horn Devil number 2 is electrocuted for 30 points of damage, needing a 15 or greater, Horn Devil number, it's Janet's turn. What do you want her to do? Janet uses a blink dog on Brock number 1, biting it for two points of damage for a half hour. It's Barthal's turn. What do you want him to do? Barthal readies his short sword plus one and swings at Horn Devil number three, needing a 24 to hit. Die roll is a 20 which is an automatic hit, Barthal hits Horn Devil number three, doing three points of damage and leap, it's Red Fern's turn. What do you want him to do? Redfern casts Fireball on roughly half of all encountered combatants, blasting them in an explosion of flame. Horn Devil number 3 is burned for 15 points of damage, needing. St. Aetius casts Cure Light Wounds on Janet, healing her for 11 hit points. Brock number one attacks Eswin with its, it's Karthus turn. What do you want her to do? GM note, a new combat round has begun. Initiative is rolled. Eswin uses a glowing skull throughout the entire local area, illuminating everything well. It's Janet's turn. What do you want her to do? Janet casts cause light wounds on Horn Devil number 3, wounding it for 12 points of damage, Marioleth casts Magic Missile on Brock number 1, 
striking it with a magic missile for 8 points of damage. Brock number 1 has been defeated. Well done. All combatants have been defeated, ending the battle. Each hero receives 1170 experience points. The last of the infernals go down and you breathe a sigh of relief, glad to have defeated such powerful adversaries. Let's have a look around, S. Wynn suggests, beginning a search of the circular chamber. Searching the area, you find nothing of interest or value. Daria suggests, however, that the battle here was significant for your party anyway. Hopefully that was the main force of infernals left after the ultimates above locked them down here, Daria suggests. Well probably encounter more, but hopefully not in such numbers. Your heroes nod to one another, thankful that the difficult encounter is now over. All the infernals dispatched here within the Hall of Victory, you can now proceed past the area. Exits lead away to the west, north and east as well as southwest back to the stairs leading up to the first floor. Janet casts Cure Moderate Wounds on herself, healing her. Janet casts Cure Light Wounds on Eswin, healing him for 12 hit points. Travel Alert, using the hallway, you travel east, taking a few minutes to arrive, reaching what appears to have once been a barracks, the chamber has been utterly wrecked, its beds, footlockers, tables and such all thrown about in haphazard chaos. Far worse, copious amounts of blood is everywhere, splattered across the walls and even the ceiling as well across all the ruined furniture here. Fortunately, the grisly chamber seems uninhabited, so you should be able to do a quick search in relative safety. Conducting a thorough search, you soon find the mangled bodies of at least a dozen ultimates, their robes stained with blood and some of the corpses missing an arm or leg, these hapless souls died quite violently. Daria seems particularly shocked by the carnage. I am guessing the ultimates here were attacked in their sleep, Daria speculates, continuing to poke about. The infernals absolutely butchered them. Janet, let's do an empathy check on your hero to see if you notice anything further. Needing a 14 or less from Janet, a 10 was rolled. Success, yes, there is a sorrow here, a combination of rage and sadness that you can feel but can't see. The sensation is eerie and you worry something bad is about to happen. A moment later, some ghostly apparition appears in one corner of the chamber, flying toward you before disappearing again. Remaining alert, several more apparitions appear, flying about in haphazard fashion. A dozen more ghostly images appear, melding together to form ghostly entities reaching from floor to ceiling, rotating like tornadoes and wailing in sadness. Let's do a party intelligence check to see what you make of these strange things. Needing a 14 or less from your heroes, a 6 was rolled. Success, it's, it's an amalgam. Kartha shouts, recognizing the undead monster. Don't get too near, it can drain energy levels. Watching the ghostly, rotating, cloud-like things there within the chamber, you feel the temperature drop and sense extreme cold from what can only be monsters. As they attack, your instincts warn you that these creatures are powerful, magical, undead, and very dangerous. Your party is under attack. Menacing your entire party are three amalgams. It's Barthal's turn. What do you want him to do? Needing a 45 or less on percentile dice, a 71 is rolled. Eswin uses a boots of speed on himself, allowing himself to act. Marioleth casts Phantasmal Force on Amalgam number 3, nearly horrifying it, needing a 14 or greater, Amalgam number 3 ro It's Darius' turn. What do you want him to do? 
Darius casts Fireball on roughly half of all encountered combatants, blasting them in an explosion. Kartha casts Spiritual Hammer on Amalgam number 2, bashing it for 1 point of damage for 5 minutes. Janet uses a Blink Dog on Amalgam number 2, biting it for 1 point of damage for a half hour. It's Cnires' turn. Cnires casts Spiritual Hammer on Amalgam number 2, bashing it for two. It's Red Fern's turn. What? GM note, a new combat round has begun. Initiative is rolled, with higher values acting first, Red Fern casts S win readies his longsword plus two and swings at amalgam number one. Janet casts Spiritual Hammer on Amalgam number 1, bashing it for 3. Marioleth casts Magic Missile on Amalgam number 1. Redfern casts Magic Missile on Amalgam number 1, striking it with a Magic Missile for 7 points of damage. It's Barthal's turn. What do- Barthal readies his Short Sword plus 1 and swings at Amalgam number 1, Needing an 18 to hit. Sainadius readies his mace plus 1 and swings at Amal. Darius casts magic missile on Amalgam number 3, striking it with a magic. Sainadius directs his spiritual hammer at Amalgam number 1, bashing it for. Janet directs her blink dog at Amalgam number 3, biting it for. Eswin readies his longsword plus 2 and swings at Amalgam. Kartha readies her mace plus one and swings at amalgam number three, needing an 18. Kartha directs her spiritual hammer at amalgam number three, bashing it. GM note, a new combat round has begun. Eswin readies his longsword plus two and swings at amalgam number three. Ne Janet readies her mace plus two and swings at amalgam number three, needing an 18 to hit. Kartha readies her mace plus one and swings at amalgam number three. Kartha directs her spiritual hammer at amalgam number three, bashing it for three points of damage and defeating it. Well done. All combatants have been defeated, ending the battle. Each hero receives 354 experience points. Barthol has gained a new energy level and receives two new hit points. A final blow is struck and the amalgams disintegrate in a blinding flash of light. For a moment, the corpses glow as their life energies are purified and released. The light then disappears altogether and the temperature returns to normal. They weren't ready to die, Darius comments, breaking the silence. So their souls remained bound to our material plane, joining together to form these sad, hopeless monsters. It's good that we destroyed them. I could sense their overwhelming sadness, Kartha adds, her empathy quite strong. The rest of your heroes nod, glad to have the whole experience behind you. With nothing more to do here, it's time to move on. A closed door stands to the south while an open hallway leads away to the west. Barthol has a 55% chance of picking the lock and rolls a 79 on percentile dice. Failure, the, your heroes bash open the footlocker, destroying the locking mechanism and making its contents available. However, your act of vandalism may have destroyed some of the items hidden away within the footlocker as well. Unfortunately, the footlocker has nothing of Barthol has a 55% chance of picking the lock and rolls a 33 on percentile dice. Travel alert, using the unlocked door, you travel south, taking 5 minutes to arrive, getting past the locked door, you enter a large but relatively empty chamber. Dominating the center of the room is a makeshift sarcophagus, crudely made and easily opened. Past the sarcophagus against the far western wall are dozens of humanoid corpses, stacked atop one another. The chamber reeks of rotting flesh, a stench that is hard to overcome.
However, let's do a party constitution check to see if you notice anything more here. Needing a 14 or less from your heroes, a 20 was rolled. Failure, no, there is nothing more you smell here, the corpse's stench certainly enough. Entering the room and giving it a quick search, the sarcophagus appears rather simple and is easily opened. Searching the corpses against the western wall, they are all ultimates who were likely killed battling the infernals down here. While you still strongly dislike the ultimates as a whole, you can't help but feel sorry for all these slain human beings. Your party searches for traps but don't find any. Easily opening the sarcophagus, you find the corpse of what appears to be an infernal succubus, a female demon that, so far at least, you haven't faced in combat. Even in death the succubus appears beautiful, with ruby red lips, thick brown hair and a slim body that only betrays its infernal nature by two small horns and leathery wings. Darius carefully inspects the succubus corpse and verifies that it is truly dead, you need not fear it. I've heard of these, things, Eswin begins, examining the corpse along with Sainadius and Kartha. They charm you, then drain your life through their kisses. Yes, they're very difficult to resist when you're alone, Sainadius adds, aware of them as well. Even in death, she still looks so beautiful, Kartha observes. I wonder what killed her? You wonder the same thing. Let's try doing a party reason check and see what happens. Needing a 13 or less from Janet, a 16 was rolled. Failure, no, nothing more happens, the slain succubus continues to look as beautiful in death as she was in life. The succubus corpse otherwise void of anything important or useful, there is little more you can do in this room. You'll need to exit the primitive burial chamber through the door to the north. Kartha casts Cure Light Wounds on Eswin, healing him for 5 hit points. GM Note, your source of light has just gone out, your party rests and recovers for 8 hours. Wounds are tended, spells are memorized and your heroes are refreshed. Travel Alert, returning to the Hall of Victory, you take 5 minutes to arrive, all the infernals dispatched here within the Hall of Victory, you can now proceed past the area. Exits lead away to the west, north and east as well as southwest back to the stairs leading up to the first floor. You spend about 5 minutes searching the area. However, you don't find any secret doors or exits. There is nothing hidden here, either. Your party searches for traps but don't find any. <laughs>